Welcome to video two on our Cato Lake project. We're going to be talking about the chain and installation of it and uh, a few other things. So when you get your sprue with the links on it, we've got uh, various numbers going down the side. We've got X, which are mainly for the N and Z scales, Q and R, which are our main units, and then the T and the S. So we'll go through each of these separately to show you where they're applying within the system. So your main one is your R and the Q for um, bicycles, vehicles, sliders, uh, all of these. So the next step up is for the ice cream vendor and the tandem and we use T's. So we have two T's for the um, uh, tandem, but for the ice cream vendor and the cargo bike, we have three T's. And this is to accommodate the, the front of the uh, ice cream van and the cargo uh, section. So you can see how they're configured there. So if you set this up, you can use this configuration for either the cargo bike, the ice cream vendor, or the tandem. Um, and I usually colour these in um, so you can see it clearly coming around if you've got an open section of, of um, track work. I put use the ready to run bikes as the basis for getting the north-south polarity right. I just throw the magnets onto there and then getting my uh, texture colour or whatever pen you've got, um, I colour the, the bottom of the magnet in. Now the reason for this is, once you pull them away, it's very difficult to tell which is north, south, east, west, whatever. So by doing it this way, I'm able to put them into the uh, slots knowing that I shouldn't be able to see the purple. The purple should be going into the, the base of the chain and that way I know the north-south is still, still uh, correct. And that applies to, to all the magnets. Once that's in, you can do the same just by putting your magnets on top of those painting them again, um, and uh, yeah, away you go. Um, if you don't have a, a ready to run bike, I'm afraid you have to work out what north-south is by other means. Sorry about the bounce again, but the video just sort of catches it. Now after you've cut all your blue bits off, your blue bits of chain, you've got to get rid of that bit of sprue at the end, and this is very important a lot of people don't get this right. It has to be totally rounded and clear, but don't touch the other end. We're only talking about the rounded end that has the prong on it. Um, bit of sandpaper does the job, gets it fine. Once you've done that, they should click together and click together very easily. Don't force them, usually on an angle and then as long as they can move freely, you'll have no problems. A lot of the problems is that people just don't clean this far good enough. Um, and when we do install them, that curved bit is the way the track is going to go, the direction you're going to go. Right, having got your blue chain into the channel, all pointing the right way, a direction of travel. You should be able to turn up your speed controller to full without anything happening. If it does go click clack, uh, it's too loose, so you need to use some of the smaller blue links and just bring it back so it's finger tight. You can just rock it backwards and forwards without being too slack, but it's all about fine tuning. Now with your basic boat set you now get this raft <clears throat> which has a slider built in but I always uh, always like to put a bit of the stick on flock on the bottom just to reduce the static and the scratching on your um, on your layout 
As I said in the previous one, I cover these all with a clear plastic, PVC, whatever you like. It's only a thin layer. Um, I did have the trouble sticking this to the foam, as I've stated before. But anyhow, I now use this, the Bush Elf Asphalt Strasse, the Asphalt Road. Um, I actually cut this in half because I didn't need a full width road but it's the bicycle one that I love. Um, it's just going to bring a new dimension uh, to putting down roads and that with the Magna Rail system. Now we buy ours through Australian Modeler, um, 1450, you get two, you get a, a black one and a, a ready sort of one. Um, and the road comes in either one meter or two meter lengths. Um, and it has the white down the side. So you can see here where I've chopped it in half, I've kept the white onto one side. You can also get a country road one as an unmarked uh, one if you just want asphalt going around. Now, Bosch have a huge amount of, of options with this stuff, car parks, etc. So because you can't see through it, I try and mark out the boundaries um, and uh, get the centre, so I know where the centre is on these um, and try and get the track to, to align with that. So it's a little bit involved, but uh, as you'll see in a moment, it's very, very easy laying, but also it is so flexible. Uh, and this is the trick, it can go around corners, you just stretch it around as you go. Um, it does a wonderful job. Um, it's a case of careful not to kink it, because uh, if you kink it, it doesn't unkink. It's very, very sticky. Once it's down, uh, it's very difficult to pull it up. So as you can see, I just pull the backing away um, from underneath as I go around. Uh, if you pull it, the backing off completely and put it down, um, you'll be in all sorts of strife. Now we've got our matting, uh, grass matting, uh, which we'll just glue on. We are, will be selling this um, in rolls uh, to you. Um, if you wish to purchase, they come in various shades. But uh, I will point out that we did a template with tracing paper first and uh, got all the dimensions right. And then I transferred that uh, tracing paper onto the back of, of this. It just cuts with scissors, you don't need special tools. The paper backing will take glue, it'll stick to whatever you need to do. And then I just did this for the fold over flap. So on the side, and you'll see uh, something later um, where we've been able to bend that over and it just seals off the underside of the, um, the layout. And then as you can see from the side view, it just gives a, a nice clean finish. Another thing I do is use, is use all the Magna Rail controllers, power controllers, but I also use it for my trains. It's a 12 volt controller. Much easier, fine control, no big transformers everywhere, uh, a really clean setup. I also put uh, wadding underneath and seal it off under the layout just to deaden any noise because it's like a big echo chamber without it. And then I just put uh, a covering over the bottom so it doesn't all catch as you're sliding it into uh, positions. Uh, it's very light this, you can pick it up with one hand, um, which is great. So my wife went through and said, no, nah, that layout's not looking good. So out with the trees and the ground cover and she did a great job in Seneking and making it a bit prettier. I was looking for a practical thing to show off Magna Rail, but her eye just brought everything alive. The trees on the island, 
dotted around the place and you know you don't put three four of anything you've always got to put five you've got to have odd numbers so no she did a great job and thank you Lois for your input on this uh, you can see the guys racing to get supplies to the food van there so this is what you see now the bitumen road and then the clear section the umpa band there which I've had for years and years and years. I had it in the first layout uh, with Echo Mountain and they've been put away, but now they're out and getting an airing. There goes the postman, the windsurfer and the paddle boats are from a fella um, kit, just a boat kit, a static one. So the paddle boats are, are great for this sort of thing with a small lake. The yacht might be a bit of overkill, but uh, it was just to show people what you can do. Regrettably, I've lost or misplaced the raft that comes with the Magna Rail basic boat set, uh, which is the size that you see here going around the lake. So if it surfaces again, um, I'll be doing a separate video uh, showing it on the lake. It's a great little set. As I said, it's already got the slider incorporated. The little HOE loco is Rhiannus, which I didn't even know how to pronounce his name until the kids started saying, oh look there's Rhiannus going around. He's from Sodar, which is Thomas the Tank Engine's playground. Um, effective little one. I've got a, a point system here to be able to have two trains loaded and ready, uh, just to create a bit of variation. You can see my magnets going through there. Um, and I've made a, a lot of options uh, in terms of the spacing of the magnets and that's one of the things you do have to think ahead uh, when creating your Magna Rail layout. You've got to think, well, where do I want my various things to, to occur, my scenes? So the bicycles can have two riding behind each other uh, or stretched out. So that's it for now. Uh, if you like this, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, but subscribe when you can. Thanks for watching.